Today we're talking about the stuff that makes our world go round. Resources. Everything we use, eat, and build with comes from Earth's resources, but not all resources are created equal. We're going to break them down into three categories. Renewable, non-renewable, and flow resources. And we'll see how they connect with Earth's physical features. Let's get started. First up, we have renewable resources. These are the resources that can replenish themselves over time, as long as we don't overuse them. It's like having a garden. You can keep picking veggies as long as you keep planting and watering them. Some key examples include trees, natural fish stocks, soil, and plants. Trees are a classic renewable resource. They grow back after we cut them down for lumber, paper, or even to make maple syrup. Yum! But only if we're careful about how much we cut and how much we replant. Forests also play a huge role in the environment by absorbing carbon dioxide and providing habitats for wildlife. Natural fish stocks are another renewable resource. Fish populations can recover if we fish responsibly, letting species breed and grow. But if we overfish, we can deplete these stocks faster than they can recover, which is bad news for both the fish and the people who rely on them. Soil is a renewable resource too. It's essential for growing food and plants, and if we take care of it by rotating crops, composting, and preventing erosion, it can keep producing for generations. But if we don't manage it well, soil can become degraded and lose its ability to support plant life. Plants provide us with food, medicine, and raw materials, and they're renewable as long as we keep growing them sustainably. Whether it's wheat in the prairies or rice in paddies, plants are a crucial part of life on Earth. Next, let's talk about non-renewable resources. These are the resources that don't come back once we've used them up. They take millions of years to form, so when they're gone, they're gone. Some key examples include fossil fuels and metallic minerals. Fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas are formed from the remains of ancient plants and animals that were buried and compressed over millions of years. We rely on them for energy, but burning fossil fuels also releases carbon dioxide, which contributes to climate change. Once we use up a coal seam or an oil field, it won't refill in our lifetime, or even in the next million lifetimes. Metallic minerals like iron, copper, and gold are mined from the earth. They're used to make everything from cars to smartphones to jewelry. Just like fossil fuels, these minerals are non-renewable, so we need to use them wisely and recycle them whenever possible. Finally, let's explore flow resources. Flow resources are a bit different. They're constantly being renewed by natural processes and we can't use them up. They're like a never-ending buffet that keeps replenishing itself. Some key examples include solar energy, running water, ocean currents, tides, and wind. Solar energy comes from the sun, and it's about as renewable as it gets. As long as the sun is shining, we can capture its energy using solar panels and convert it into electricity. Solar power is a clean, endless source of energy that doesn't run out. Unless you're a vampire, then it's just annoying. Running water is harnessed through hydroelectric power. Dams and rivers are used to generate electricity as water flows from high places to low places. This flow of water is driven by the water cycle, powered by the sun, so it keeps going as long as we have gravity and rainfall. Ocean currents and tides are other examples of flow resources. They're driven by the moon's gravitational pull and the Earth's rotation. We can tap into this energy to generate electricity through tidal power stations or underwater turbines. Wind is another endless resource. Wind turbines capture the energy of moving air and turn it into electricity. Wind is always blowing somewhere and it's another clean, renewable resource that doesn't run out. So how do these resources connect to Earth's physical features? Well, the availability of these resources is closely tied to the landscape and climate of different regions. Forests grow where there's enough rain and the right temperatures, like in tropical and temperate climates. Fossil fuels are often found in places that were once ancient seas or swamps, 
which is why oil and gas fields are common in places like the Middle East or Texas. Flow resources like solar and wind energy are most abundant in areas with lots of sunshine or steady winds, like deserts or coastal regions. In summary, Earth's resources, whether renewable, non-renewable, or flow, are all vital to our way of life. But they each come with their own challenges and limitations. Understanding how these resources relate to the Earth's physical features helps us use them more wisely and plan for a sustainable future. That's it for today's geography lesson. Next time you flip on a light, use your phone, or eat a meal, think about the incredible resources that made it all possible and why it's so important to protect them.